consider the function y equals 1 over x where the value of x is always greater than or equal to 1. And rotate this curve along the x-axis such that it creates a surface of a revolution. And what we're left with is a geometrical shape that looks something like this. This is called the Gabriel's home. And what's so special about this geometrical shape is that it has finite volume but infinite surface area. So first up, let us figure out the volume of the Gabriel's horn. The way we're gonna do it is by figuring out some sort of a function that gives you the volume of a very very thin slice of our horn and then integrating over that function. And we're gonna assume that the thickness of that slice approaches zero. So as the thickness is very very small, it's almost a circular disk. And we know how to calculate the volume of a circular disk. That's simply equal to pi times the radius squared times the thickness. In our case, the radius is simply the function which is 1 over x and the thickness is a small change in x and let's call that dx. The volume of that thin disk is equal to pi times 1 over x all squared which is the same as 1 over x squared times the thickness which is dx. And now we have a function that gives you the volume of a thin slice of our horn. And now we are going to integrate over that function to solve for the total volume. The integration limits are 1 and infinity. So let's simplify this integral. Pi is a constant, so we can move that out of our integral. And 1 over x squared is the same as x to the negative 2. And now we can apply the integral power rule to figure out this. And when we simplify this, we get that it's equal to pi. So how cool is that? The volume of this weird looking thing turns out to be pi. Alright, and now let's calculate the surface area of the Gabriel's horn. We're going to use the same method that we used to calculate its volume. But this time we're going to make slight difference. In the previous case, uh, we treated all slices as perfect circular disks but this time we can do that in the previous situation we ignored the slant of the slices but this time as we are calculating the surface area we can't ignore the slant of the slices we have to account that there's a specific reason for that but for now just think of it as a given we are going to figure out a function that gives you the surface area of the curved surface of a slice and then we are going to integrate over that function to solve for the surface area. So if you look at the geometry of a single slice, it's obvious that it's a conical frustum. A conical frustum consists of two flat faces, both of which are circles, and the surface area of the curved surface is equal to the circumference of the smaller circle multiplied by the slant height. The radius of the smaller circle of our conical frustum is 1 over x plus dx and we know that dx approaches 0 and if you plug in 0 we aren't gonna be facing any problems so it turns out to be 1 over x and let's represent the slant height by ds and we can work out ds by using the Pythagorean theorem the s squared equals the x squared plus dy squared we get the square root on both sides and we get ds equals the square root of dx squared plus dy squared and we get that the surface area of the curved surface of a slice is equal to 1 over x times the square root of dx squared plus dy squared now we are going to factor out a dx term to integrate this function with respect to x and now we get 1 over x times the square root of 1 plus dy squared over dx squared. dy squared over dx squared is the same as dy by dx all squared. And we know what dy by dx is, it's simply the derivative of this function, which turns out to be minus 1 over x squared. And that all squared is 1 over x to the 4th. And we can replace 1 over x to the 4th with that. And now we are ready to integrate this function. So how do we figure out this integral? The thing is that we don't even need to do this integral as it diverges to infinity. So what's the reason for that? 
The reason for that, of course, is quite obvious. So if we integrate the function 1 over x with respect to x, we get infinity. And as the square root of 1 plus 1 over x to the fourth is always greater than 1, we can come to a conclusion that this integral diverges to infinity. Therefore, the surface area of the Grebel horn is infinity. And the paradox behind the Grebel horn is you can fill it up with par units of paint, but you can never paint the surface of it as it has infinite surface area. But when you fill it up with par units of paint, doesn't that paint the surface? But filling the Grebel horn with paint is technically impossible. The reason for that is because the length of the Gables horn is infinity and the paint that we put in to fill up the Gables horn will take forever to get to the bottom of the Gables horn as it will have to cover an infinite distance to get to the bottom.